It was one of the biggest discoveries in archaeological history. Of all the royal tombs during the Three Kingdoms period, it is the only one we know who it belongs to. But despite its value, the excavation of the tomb was recorded as one of the most costly blunders in the world. What had happened 40 years ago? Songsanli tombs in Gongju, Chungcheong Namdo province is where all the kings that reigned in Umjin during the Baekje period are laid to rest. The tomb of King Mudeong, which has only existed in records, was found by chance 40 years ago. While drainage works were being done on Songsanli tomb number six, a worker shovel hit something hard. As he began to slowly dig down, bricks were revealed. The work was put on hold and a research team was sent. As the research team continued to dig, a wider area of brick walls came into view. However, heavy rain began to fall. It was rumored that the rain fell because the king's tomb had been disturbed. Once it stopped raining, the team went back to work. About eight meters down from the exposed brick wall, a brick tomb was revealed. They removed the bricks that were blocking the entrance with great difficulty. It was the moment that the tomb of a king who lived 1,500 years ago came into the open. The excavation of King Mudeong's tomb is an amazing discovery for ancient history. On the memorial stone inside the tomb was carved the word Sama, which was King Mudeong's name as a child. It was a tomb that had only existed in records. However, the excavation of the tomb ended in a single day. The unimaginable had occurred. What happened at the excavation site 40 years ago? When it was found in 1971, the excavation created an uproar. Newspapers published exclusive articles, and reporters and crowds of people flocked to the site. Everyone wanted to take a look inside first. Even before the research team arrived, the grave was made public by the media. In the end, the head of the excavation team decided to stay up all night to finish the work, and so priceless artifacts were trampled on over the night. 17 hours of a rushed excavation, the tomb had lost the traces of history, and only regret and unsolved mysteries remained. When the tomb was first opened, the coffin had caved in and was blocking the path into the tomb. Ceramics had fallen over and were scattered around. Artifacts were in disarray around the coffin. And all the artifacts were out of place. It seemed as if the tomb had received a severe impact. Could it have been caused by the coffin when it caved in? Or was it because of an earthquake? What had happened underground during the past 1,500 years? The tomb of Baekje's 25th king, King Mudeong and his queen. However, there is no way of knowing where the artifacts were originally placed and why. The only chance to find out is gone forever. All the valuable information inside the tomb is now lost. There are no accurate records of the artifacts not even a single picture. It was an epic discovery that changed the research in Baekje history, and new facts were indeed revealed, but there are many more unanswered questions. It was one of the biggest mistakes made by Korean archaeologists, which couldn't be undone. This, too, is part of history that must be remembered. The chambers of the dead, which had been sealed for 1,500 years, were now open. The tomb had been built with hundreds and thousands of bricks. It was a strange tomb, 
that had never been found before. What does this unique Pekje tomb tell us about the truth of 1,500 years ago? There are very little records about Pekje history, but the tomb of King Muryong provides a clue. When the tomb was excavated in 1971, one of the things that scholars found unusual was the tomb itself. It was built in a unique style that had never been seen in the Korean peninsula before. The style did not exist even in Shila or Koguryo, states of the same time period. The interior of the tomb was shaped as an arch. Bricks were laid carefully, layer by layer. The brick walls were adorned with lotus flower motifs. The tomb of King Muryong was a room decorated for the afterlife. The walls were stacked with four layers of bricks horizontally and one layer vertically. How did they build an arch in this way? Most of the bricks used were rectangular. The trapezoid-shaped bricks were used in the central part of the arch where the ceiling became narrower. The writings carved onto the bricks were to indicate which bricks went where inside the tomb. King Muryong's tomb was built scientifically, based on a blueprint. The only other brick tomb is the tomb that lies next to King Muryong's, Songsangmi tomb number no. 6, which belongs to another Pekje king. Then where did the strange style come from? In order to find answers, we inspected Songsanli tomb number no. 6. Songsanli tomb number no. 6 has the same structure as King Muryong's tomb. The way it was built and the bricks used are essentially identical. Then where did the bricks used in Songsanli tomb number no. 6 come from? A decisive clue was carved on the bricks. Yang Guanhua, Wei Sali. It says that the bricks were made by imitating bricks made by Liang China's government office. Then why did Pekche import Liang China's brick-making method? Liang was one of the states during the Southern Dynasties and existed at the time of King Muryong. Could this mean that the tomb of King Muryong was influenced by the tombs of Liang China? Looking at the bricks used in King Muryong's tomb, we found that they were similar to the ones found in the tombs of Yang China. Even the patterns on the bricks were similar. The arch-shaped brick tomb discovered in Liang also closely resembled King Muryong's tomb. The structure was also nearly identical. King Muryong's tomb was in fact influenced by Liang China. Then what does this acceptance of Chinese culture mean? Trade with China reached its height during King Muryong's time. The fact that he embraced new and advanced cultures can be seen in the relics found inside his tomb. The ceramics from the two countries are nearly identical. This means that the ceramics of Liang China were exported to Pekje. An oil lamp made of white porcelain and a coin from Liang China. The tomb was full of the very best of Pekje's metal crafts and East Asian culture at that time. This legacy shows the open world view which King Muryong wished to establish 1,500 years ago. He went beyond the Korean peninsula and exchanged cultures with China, providing the foundation to build a great Pekje. The internationality of being open to East Asian culture, this was the power of Pekje.